Nintendo is no stranger to handhelds. In the United States, they managed to beat out their more powerful competitors like the Atari Lynx, Game Gear, Turbo Express, PlayStation Portable, and the Vita. But before the Game Boy and before the Famicom, Nintendo came out with a series of games that actually helped define who they are today. And I'm talking about the Game & Watch, the portable series of games by Nintendo starting in 1980 and discontinuing in 1991. The series was incredibly popular with certain titles selling more than a million units. The series has seen a new resurgence with the introduction of Mr. Game & Watch in the Super Smash Bros. series. So what is a Game & Watch? Well it's a game and a watch all rolled into one. There are 47 games varying from super simple like Ball to dual screen versions like Zelda. In addition to the game there's a feature where you can set the time and an alarm. The games are played on a liquid crystal display which makes the games a little bit rudimentary but for 1980 having a compact portable time waster of a game that also doubles as a watch for $20 is a pretty good deal. All Game & Watches are unique in their own little way. In fact there are 11 different versions of Game & Watch. The most popular series was the widescreen version and the vertical multi-screen series. There are a couple of fringe versions like the color series which there were only two of and the tabletop series which acted more like an arcade probably to compete with the Coleco tabletops at the time. And then you have the crystal game and watch which is a see-through screen. The Game & Watch is powered by two button cell LR44 watch batteries. I mean naturally it would run on watch batteries. Most Game & Watches featured a kickstand that you can easily tell what time it is and set an alarm for when it's time to wake up. Of course these features are secondary to what people actually bought them for and that's the games. And each game is fairly unique but still feature a very simple gaming layout. One or two buttons on the left for controlling your character and an action button on the right. It's pretty impressive how they manage to keep the games different despite the generic layout. For example Ball only has two buttons, left and right. Some games feature a D-pad which will look really familiar if you played any Nintendo system. In fact, the D-pad on the Game & Watch came before its use on the Famicom and NES controller. First appearing on Donkey Kong in June of 1982, the D-pad offers a bit more fluid controls without adding separate buttons. However, the D-pad is more raised than on the NES controller which doesn't feel as good. Also it's significantly smaller, about half the size of the NES D-pad. But it is still pretty impressive to have that level of control on such a primitive looking device. And of course I couldn't publish a Game & Watch video without mentioning one of its most major influences on future Nintendo products. The Nintendo DS shares a lot of the dual screen Game & Watch's DNA right down to its clamshell design and button arrangement. The Game & Watch introduced some games that are unique to the platform like Mario's Cement Factory where you put cement in cement trucks and also home to licensed games like Popeye and Mickey Mouse. Again these games are pretty basic and don't really go too far beyond a couple of actions since the LCD only shows a fixed image in a certain area at a given time. The later games like Zelda did offer a bit more gameplay. You need to fight through multiple layers of a dungeon in order to collect pieces of the Triforce. But the dungeon layout is still the same for the most part except enemies increase in difficulty. And speaking of difficulty there are two modes to each game. A or B. A is the basic form of the game but if you want a challenge then you choose game B which is usually the same game only sped up for more difficulty. Game & Watch games are pretty durable despite most of them having an exposed plastic screen. Most still work even 40 years later, however they're not immune to damage. Most Game & Watches that I've come across are missing their battery cover but one annoying theme across most of these is the screen. You can see that it has some discoloration in the back on this unit. And this is caused because the Game & Watch at one point in time was exposed to moisture. I don't think it was actually submerged but any kind of humidity would cause this. And that's because the background is a piece of cardboard. And the good news is is that it's fairly easy to fix if you're patient to unscrew it and then replace that piece of cardboard completely. You just need to be sure that if there's a polarizer it's placed in the right direction or else the screen will be inverted with dark background and clear sprites. The Game & Watch started to lose favor after the Game Boy came to market offering a much more robust mobile gaming experience. But the Game Boy can't tell time to wake me up so score one for the Game & Watch. 
The Game Boy's immense popularity pretty much killed the Game & Watch, although one more game managed to come out in 1991. Some Game & Watch games would see a re-release in 1998 in the form of Nintendo Mini Classics, which are keychain versions of the Game & Watches. All are in the form factor of a Game Boy and can be found for significantly cheaper than their originals. Despite being no longer produced, the Game & Watch series is continually popping up in Nintendo systems to this day. There are official Nintendo ports of certain Game & Watch games that I'll get into later in this video, but the most popular appearance of the Nintendo Game & Watch has to be Mr. Game & Watch, who was first introduced in Smash Bros. Melee in 2001. Since then, Game & Watch has made cameos in games like WarioWare and being used as a logo in Super Mario Odyssey. Despite their popularity when they were released, Finding working Game & Watches in good condition today can be pretty difficult and when you do come across them they can be pricey. Expect to spend anywhere from $50 to $300 for one of these systems depending on what kind of game that you're interested in. And that's just for a loose copy. The good news is, is that these games are the same despite the region that they were sold in, except Octopus is called Mysteries of the Deep or Sea in the UK. So if you're in the United States like I am and don't mind waiting for international shipping, sometimes you can find a good deal. I bought this Zelda Game & Watch for $95 shipped from the Ukraine, which is a tremendous deal as they typically go anywhere from $150 to $250. A complete in-box version will cost you even more. The United States got plastic bubble packaging which means that finding a complete in-box version is even more difficult since most people just tossed it after opening. The earlier Game & Watches were sold as Time Out here in the US so I prefer the original Nintendo versions. The keychain models are a little bit less expensive, but in my opinion a bit harder to find. These are simple toys and not really meant to be collectible, especially since the packaging is this rigid plastic that was most likely tossed after opening. But if you look, there are a handful available for $12 a piece with free shipping. I actually paid $60 for this Zelda one which was shipped from Spain. Some of the Game & Watch games were ported to the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance in the form of Game & Watch Gallery 1, 2, 3, and 4. These games featured reimagined classics of specific Game & Watch games with the ability to unlock classic versions of it. While most of the licensed games like Popeye and Mickey Mouse weren't there, the majority of the Nintendo owned properties are available and best of all, these are pretty inexpensive compared to the individual counterparts. The Nintendo Club did release the Game & Watch collection for the Nintendo DS which better emulated the dual screen Game & Watch games like Donkey Kong and Oil Panic but the sequel was a bit more disappointing as it recreated games that were already available on the Game Boy even though they did add more to take advantage of the dual screen. Club Nintendo also released Ball as a reward. It's exactly the same as its original version right down to the box despite the ugly ESRB logo on the US version. Also, Nintendo has just announced that Mario 1 and 2 will be available in a Game & Watch form factor with a full color LCD screen and a Mario version of Ball. If you don't want to pay anything, there is a site called PikaPick.com that utilizes Flash to recreate the experience of some of these games, but Flash is being phased out at the end of 2020, so if they don't convert the site to HTML5, you're going to be SOL at the end of 2020. Overall, the Game & Watch series serves as a time capsule for what mobile games were like back in the 1980s. However, LCD gaming was pretty popular despite the Game Boy success. Konami introduced their own LCD IPs in these weird torpedo-like handhelds, and of course you can't forget Tiger with their handheld versions of Sonic the Hedgehog, Street Fighter, and a whole bunch of other games. And there were plenty of other LCD type games well into 2000, and some of them got pretty crazy. LCD games have seen a bit of a resurgence as of late, and you can buy a Tamagotchi for $20 from Target, and also Tiger, which is owned by Hasbro now, is re-releasing popular titles of their handheld games from the 90s like Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and X-Men for $15 a piece. I just wish that Nintendo would follow suit and re-release some of their Game & Watch games in a similar fashion. And that wraps it up for this video. It was really a lot of fun researching this video and coming across some games that I wanted to add to my collection. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a deep dive into the Konami or Tiger handhelds. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it on social media and you can tag me on Instagram or Twitter at Snicktendo. 
And if you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing for future content. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.